Morning everyone. I'm gonna let it roll for a few minutes here while uh, some people hop on Facebook Live and connect to this. Uh, you are tuned in to Ask a Painter Live on Facebook. I am Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company in New Prague, Minnesota. Uh, I am a restorationist. I'm an enthusiast um, in all matters of finishing. Uh, bordering on zealot if you could call it that so um, I've been a craftsman for more than 20 years uh, and this ask a painter segment is my way of taking 20 years of knowledge and consent condensing it down into an easy to easy to digest format um, you send me your questions during the week during this broadcast and after and I will compile them and I will answer them for you um, I, like I said, I've been a craftsman for over 20 years now. My business, um, a, lot of, a lot of painting businesses specialize in, in certain things. I do not. I, I am a true generalist. I consider myself a decorator in the, in the matter of the late 1800s decorator, where if, if you needed your house to look better, you would call upon a decorator and he would show up and he could do decorative finishing, he could do wallpaper, he could paint the outside, inside, he could do uh, full graining on your woodwork, he could consult in window fashions, uh, anything you could possibly do to decorate your home. Uh, that's what I consider myself. I have a full-scale finishing shop that we do uh, new windows, cabinets, things like that. I like to stay up on that. Uh, and what makes me unique is that I still paint houses by hand, outside, uh, all by brush, all by ladder. Uh, and in my finishing shop, I take uh, traditional finishing methods like shellac, oil varnish, uh, dyes and stains and uh, use those in a uh, full-scale production setting nowadays so we get the benefit of that traditional oil varnish which a lot of people have seen in a hundred year old farmhouses uh, and apply that to newer cabinetry to give people the finest finishes available so uh, today we are going to be talking about painting vinyl siding um, 10 years ago you would have been crazy uh, if, if you would have even attempted this or talked to anybody about doing this but uh, paint technology has come a long way, especially with the advent of 100% acrylic elastomeric paints uh, for the outside of your house. So now it's actually doable and many paint companies actually have specific products for painting vinyl siding. Uh, I'm going to walk you through a couple of the precautions. I'm going to tell you not how to do it and I, I will tell you exactly how to do it. And uh, like I mentioned this week on Facebook, um, there is one very important thing in any painting project but especially this painting project that will mean the, dif the difference between uh, success and failure and and by failure I mean all the paint peeling off the front of your vinyl sided house like potato chips and uh, uh, all your neighbors looking down on you because of this so <coughs> excuse me I will get to that one very important thing in a little bit um, number one uh, the first general rule of painting you can paint anything but it takes proper prep and you have to have uh, proper maintenance schedules uh, involved with that. You have to have reasonable expectations on uh, how long something's gonna last and what it's gonna look like on a certain timeline. Uh, number one, what not to do with vinyl siding. Um, do not go to uh, any paint store and grab a low grade or a mid grade standard exterior house paint and apply it to vinyl siding. It will not work. Uh, it, number one, it probably won't stick. Number two, if you put no thought into the color, you may end up ruining your siding by warping it. Um, and number two, uh, how not to do it, do not paint any vinyl siding without washing it and prepping it first. Um, the first consideration, uh, now that we know what not to do, the first consideration is finding the proper paint. Um, I am going to use Benjamin Moore and Sherwin-Williams as the examples. Uh, they're available worldwide, readily available. There are many, many other paint companies who have specific products for this or adapt their products to fit to vinyl siding. So, uh, Benjamin Moore has a product called uh, Regal Select Revive that's specifically for vinyl siding. Uh, Sherwin-Williams, you can use a number of products. Uh, if you're going to do this, I would suggest using the highest end product available uh, duration or uh, super paint if you must. Um, uh, but they adapt those, uh, their standard exterior house paints uh, to vinyl siding. Um, and like I said, there's many other, uh, many other paint manufacturers that offer this. So if in question, go to a professional paint store and ask for a recommendation on what specifically, uh, what specific paint in your area if you don't have access to those two. Color. Color is very important, not only for aesthetic looks, but this is the one time when you paint your house where you could actually ruin your house physically by choosing the wrong color. 
Uh, vinyl siding uh, accepts heat from the sun in different ways and, and on hot days where you see the clouds or the sun come in and out of the clouds sometimes you can hear the vinyl siding on a house move uh, because it expands and contracts so quickly. Uh, the general rule of thumb with color is if, you're, if your house is, here I'll show you, this is a sample of some siding. This is just a, an average taupe or gray siding. If, if you just go to a paint store and pick a color uh, that is uh, darker than this, uh, you may end up warping your vinyl siding. Uh, it, the, the darker color will uh, attract more heat from the sun and it will actually buckle your siding. And this is worst case scenario. If you paint your house with any old standard house paint and it's vinyl sided, uh, with no thought to color, uh, you could do this to your entire house, and at that point, it's it's complete replacement. So, whatever you do, do not do that. Uh, like I said, the color is the very important thing, and and the the two main companies, Benjamin Moore and Sherwin Williams, give you lots of guidelines uh, uh, as far as colors go. Benjamin Moore has give or take 335 colors you can choose from, with a little bit of leeway here and there. Uh, Sherwin Williams has. Um, and this one is a, is a couple years old now, but this is basically uh, from Sherwin-Williams. This is vinyl safe colors. This is sort of their standard, uh, when they started uh, marketing uh, paint for vinyl siding, this is, what, um, this is what they recommended for color. But I checked back with my Sherwin-Williams rep, and they assured me that almost every one of their colors can be adapted to vinyl siding. Uh, what they do is actually pretty interesting. They, they remove certain colors of tints from the paint and replace them with others so that it doesn't warp. So uh, the, the project that spurred this on was a, you know, a standard house, maybe 10 to 12 years old in my hometown here. Uh, the only paintable thing on it was uh, We just lost connection there for a second. Um, but uh, there were three areas of shakes on the house, vinyl shakes, that uh, that the homeowner wanted to add some visual interest to their house and I thought well you know we can obviously do the garage door and the front door but um, these three areas of vinyl shakes are actually perfect for an accent color so you know knowing that there's specific products for it I, I checked in with them I, I got some color direction from the homeowner what would you like to see I checked in with the paint companies and uh, they said yeah basically we can take uh, that color uh, we will run it through our, our matching, and instead of uh, black color, which is basically the, the bane of vinyl siding, if you use a black tint in the paint, it, it's going to attract more heat, and then you're going to get this again. So what they did was actually uh, the, the computer formulates the paint to remove the black tint, and in, in its place they actually used a green and a maroon tint to simulate that, and the color match exactly, but now the siding won't work. Uh, so this is the one time, uh, you know, I always say uh, there's no point in painting if the color isn't right, uh, but that's just aesthetics. Uh, in this case, you can actually ruin your house if you don't do the proper research on color. So uh, every company has those. Uh, just talk to a professional, talk to somebody at the paint store who knows what they're doing, who's done it before, and they will give you guidance on color. And believe you me, it's not, it's not going to be boring colors. You'll have your pick of the mill. Uh, if you want blues, if you want greens, yellows, reds, purples, whatever, they all have them. So it's not like you're going to have to pick from vinyl colors again. Uh, after you found a color uh, that suits your house, you have to go through the proper prepping procedure, just like any project. Um, over the 20 years I've been uh, a craftsman now, uh, when I go to make big improvements in my company, I find myself doing it all in prep work. Uh, and, and most houses nowadays, uh, I will spend 30 to 40 percent of the time prepping the house uh, and then the rest of the time painting it. So it's uh, prep is going to go a long way, especially with vinyl siding. Uh, number one, wash it and scrub it. If you got a pressure washer, pressure wash it, but don't damage the siding. Don't don't remove anything. Don't mark it up. Um, I, if you if you want to do it the right way, I would take a stiff bristle brush, get some detergent, either dish soap, a house wash, simple green, something, uh, spray it on there, agitate it on the siding, and then rinse it off. Uh, and to know if you did a good job washing or not, uh, after it's dry and it's not in the sun, because vinyl siding gets very pliable uh, when it heats up, on a nice cool and then uh, rub your finger on the siding, see if anything comes off on your finger. If you're still getting a little chalk, a little bit of residue, maybe some of that black powdery mildew up in the corners, keep washing it again uh, until it's ready. Uh, and then you can go to a, maybe a, a stiffer kind of detergent, you know, maybe even a TSP at some point, but you just obviously do a test area so you don't affect your siding. Uh, and, and now we come to the one big thing that will make or break this project. Um, it's called 
adhesion tests. Uh, there are two main adhesion tests I do on every job. One is called the scratch test, which is the easiest to do, and the other one is called the X test. Uh, the scratch test is where you put some uh, paint on it, you let it cure for the proper amount of time, and then you try to scratch it off. If you can scratch any of it off, you did not get proper adhesion. Uh, so I have a sample here. This is a piece of brand new vinyl siding. It's still got the, it's still got the shine from the mill on it, so this is going to be the hardest uh, type of siding uh, to paint. Uh, stuff that's been weathered for many years accepts paint very beautifully, I've found. Um, so this, I found an accent color, like somebody would probably add to their vinyl sided house. This is a low grade exterior paint uh, applied by brush. And I'll show you here, I'll scratch it a little bit. And you can see that just by scratching with your fingernail lightly, uh, you're getting some delamination of the paint. So obviously, you know, uh, I do these two tests. If the first one passes, I go to the next one. Uh, the X test. If this fails, then you know you either have to uh, wash it better, you have to go to a higher grade paint, or you have to actually use a water-based primer on it. I'll show you the X test here, and obviously uh, you want to do this in an area that's inconspicuous, somewhere out of the way. Uh, you just take a standard razor, you apply the paint, you let it cure for the proper amount of time. Uh, most, most of these paints, exterior paints, have a four hour uh, recoat time at least wait four hours I would wait 24 hours and then wait till the siding is cool there's no moisture on it it's just dry cool and and uh, cured fully so what you do is you actually create a, a series of hash marks back and forth over the paint like that and see and you will leave little score marks in this so you either want to do it on a scrap piece or somewhere out of the way and then you apply blue tape and they're actually uh, this is a, a fairly scientific test and there actually are standards to how much pressure you put on the tape the type of paint the number of cross hatches per square inch things like that but this is very simple um, you want to burnish it with your fingers like that get good adhesion to it And then pull it off like that and if you see on the back here there's just the slightest amount of uh, stuff where I scored it but uh, this is why I do the two tests sometimes the X test uh, this will pass if this is the only test you do you would have foregone this and then uh, you still would have not have got the uh, the good adhesion there so these are my two tests that I do on almost every project uh, you know especially when you're dealing with vinyl siding uh, tin pole barns uh, pre-finished metal siding things like that uh, this will make or break any project, but especially painting vinyl siding. Uh, so after, if everything adhered, if your two tests pass, uh, then you can go ahead and paint. Uh, if you're using the highest end paints, every project I've done with the proper washing and, and after the two tests have passed, I've gone two top coats by brush over the top of that stuff. Uh, spraying uh, for the average homeowner is going to be very difficult in this case. Where the vinyl siding meets uh, the edge, there's some J-channel and some other little pieces of trim. It's very hard to get that all coated properly if you're not very adept at using a sprayer. So what you want to do is use a very good nylon uh, stiff bristle brush, tape off the areas that you need to, uh, apply one coat and stay out of the sun if you can, especially with vinyl siding. Uh, it, like I said, it gets pliable, the paint dries too quickly, you're going to leave lap marks. Um, Apply it with a, with a brush, give it the proper recoat time, uh, especially in this case, uh, to let it cure at least four hours with most of the paints I checked on. Recoat it and then uh, then you're done. Um, after that, uh, that, that is about it. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention, just like I was preaching last time, is this is a technical data sheet. Uh, every, every coating, every paint, every manufacturer has this. Uh, this one I pulled up was for the Regal Select, the Benjamin Moore product. Um, <laughs> you'd be amazed uh, how many painters have no idea what these are, where they are, or where to find them. If you ever hire a house painter for your house um, and they outline a process that you're unfamiliar with or whatever, go to the technical data sheet of the product they recommend, pull it up, and this, this is the painter's bible. If you ever wanted to know how to be a painter, everything is right here for every product. In this particular one, there's a lot of where to use it, where to not to use it, but there's a very important section on the back here, which I highlighted. This tells you everything I just went through. Uh, this tells you exactly how to use the product, in what way and where. So, uh, 
if your if your painter uh, that you hire uh, is going to do a process that, like I said, you're unfamiliar with or you're uncomfortable with, ask what product they use, pull up the technical data sheet, not the material safety data sheet, that's the MSDS, that'll just give you the uh, chemicals and, and things that can happen when you use it improperly. This is the technical data sheet. It will tell you exactly how to use it. If this differs from what he is telling you, ask him questions. Why do you do that? Uh, there are certain circumstances when I use coatings where I deviate from this, but I usually add to it, not take away. So if you have a painter who's taking away uh, from this and doing less, uh, ask him why. Ask him to see jobs uh, that you can um, that you can see and go go test. Um, so yeah, this is this is <laughs> you would be amazed. This is everything you've ever needed to know about painting. Even professionals don't know where to find this. Okay, uh, Darla, uh, you had asked. We have steel siding. Do you have any tips? Same exact thing. Uh, whenever I do the pole buildings out in the country too, I do those adhesion tests. Uh, steel siding, a lot of the times, uh, when the when the coating is baked on from the from the factory, uh, you'll get uh, you know after five to ten years, it'll get chalky on the outside. That's just the natural oxidiza uh, oxidation of the paint. Uh, the, the biggest thing is getting that chalk off because that will create delamination. It doesn't matter uh, what primer, what paint you use, if you don't get rid of that chalk, that's going to be the weak link in that in that coating thing. The tin is going to be good, your paint is going to be good, that will create problems with moisture, with heat, it'll start buckling and it'll uh, bubble and it'll peel off. And at that point, you know, there's not a lot you can do. You're going to have a very poor layer of paint all over the house almost uh, to start over. Uh, for steel siding, uh, pre-finished steel siding, what you might want to do is uh, look into a, a, a series of, of coatings. Uh, I just walked this through with a local farmer here in New Prague this last week. He wants to repaint a couple of his uh, pole buildings out in the country. There is a very simple way to do it and there is a very complicated way to do it. It just depends how long they want the paint to last. Uh, how technically advanced they want the coating to be and how much money uh, they want to put into their sheds because at some point uh, paint job gets very expensive and tin replacement or just letting it weather to the point where it fails and replacing it is actually a better option. So uh, when painting tin, um, the same the same process, if you use the highest end exterior paint and do a, an, an adhesion test after washing, uh, that will tell you if that works. That's a simple two coat process then. Um, what I offer uh, a lot of my farmers and people who have industrial buildings is a three coat uh, industrial process uh, applied by an industrial sprayer. It's sort of state of the art, technologically advanced. It's a hybrid water oil mix on the primer. Uh, it's got to cure for a certain time. You have to scrub with a certain thing and then you apply two top coats over that uh, with a with 100% acrylic sort of elastomeric paint especially made for tin buildings. And that I consider the Cadillac uh, of finishes and it's a very expensive uh, mainly because of the, the the materials involved in it the materials you know even at my cost approach 60 bucks a gallon uh, and on your you know 40 by 80 pole shed I mean my god you may end up using you know 60 70 gallons of that stuff in total so it's 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 no it's no small feat to do stuff like that so uh, Alex asked if you're building a new home what siding would you pick um well, the three main options are, are vinyl, uh, four if you include stucco. Uh, it, up in the Midwest here, at least in Minnesota, we've had, uh, we've had good stucco, we've had bad stucco. You don't see a lot of it much anymore in new applications, but you have three basic options. Uh, you have the vinyl siding, you have uh, James Hardy, which is a, a cement fiber board, and then you have uh, LP, smart side, which is a, if, uh, if any of you guys have ever seen chipboard or buffalo board, it's sort of a compressed wood fiber. Um, Hardy uh, has been around uh, for just long enough now that uh, the only way I've seen it fail is when it's installed improperly. Uh, when, when you have areas of uh, siding or roofs that meet and uh, water penetrates and then that product, because it's cementaceous, will actually shale, it'll delaminate. But if it's installed properly, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's primed on all the butts. Uh, I've seen that go on for a long time now and, and it holds a finish very well if you use the highest end exterior paint. Uh, the LP Smart Side, I think it's a good product. I've done many houses with it. Uh, all the carpenters I work for uh, swear by it. Um, my only reservation about it is it is chipboard. Uh, if you if you flip over the back side of an of a piece of LP Smart Side, um, 
it is it is compressed wood chips just like you would go down and buy a sheet of uh, OSB uh, oriented strand board from the lumber yard it's it's compressed fiber like that but I've on the other hand I've also had uh, my carpenters tell me that you know they have cut a piece of that stuck it in a bucket of water and grain in uh, for six months and no delamination has occurred so uh, just like anything else when a new product comes on I, I use my 20 years of experience and say Theoretically, is this going to work or not? Let's try it out. Let's finish it in the best way possible. And if it works, it works. And if you if you follow all the technical data sheets, you you apply a perfect finish to it, and it still fails. Then you know it's just a bad product. But having said that, I haven't seen any failures on James Hardy and LP, or even the vinyl sided jobs that I've done. If you follow the technical data sheets, magically. Um, Eve, uh, what type of paint do you recommend for humid and hot areas of the country, mainly Florida? Um, I've actually, <laughs> I've actually traveled down to Florida, uh, down to a little island down there to do some painting projects uh, on a place that we vacation regularly, and uh, I was surprised to see that up in the Midwest here, I use the highest end, uh, you know, either Benjamin Moore or uh, Sherwin Williams paint. Now it's mainly Benjamin Moore. Uh, and we mainly use a flat finish up here. Uh, there's not a lot of people going to a low luster or a satin, but when I was down in Florida, every single house was done in a satin finish. And I, you know, asking the local painters in the paint store, uh, I asked for flat when I got down there to do a small project and they had a hard time finding it because people don't use it. And, and the number one reason I found was for uh, washing off salt if you're close to the ocean. So um, the best thing you can do is uh, get a, the highest end exterior paint you know, when you think about the price of a paint job outside, labor is labor is most of the job that you're going to pay for. Somewhere between 10 and 20 percent for for a good painter will be materials. And if you use the highest end paint, the difference on your average size house is only a couple hundred bucks between horrible paint and good paint. So to me, cheap insurance, and you're almost going out of your way uh, to do a bad job by not using the highest end paint there. So number one, uh, use a satin paint so you can scrub it and uh, you know if you get any of that salt air or, or things like that, um, you know you can wash it. And number two, think about the outside of the house as uh, you want to create a, a perfect impenetrable membrane. So caulking all the cracks, sealing all the holes, and then putting that nice satin over it. It'll make it completely waterproof so if you do get the tropical storms and things like that, uh, that'll hold out. And if you use the highest end exterior paints, it does have mildicide in it so it'll cut down on that powdery mildew and that green stuff growing on the north side of your house. Uh, Darla, uh, how about wood floors? We have one of the oldest houses in the, in the county. The floors have been painted and we want to go back to natural wood. What's the best paint remover? Uh, two ways to do it. Uh, any flooring guy will happily sand that off your floor for you, but you lose a lot of the uh, character. Um, I, uh, I, I prefer chemical stripping and then light sanding because that will preserve uh, the 100, 150 years of patina on there. Uh, I have done both in my house. I've had a professional floor sander do one small project where we sanded it down to brand new uh, as a test and I finished it by hand, three coats of traditional oil uh, finish. Uh, in the rest of my house, I actually chemically stripped. We have uh, we have uh, maple, clear maple, uh, that's probably 100 years old, and we have fur uh, that's 100 years old. And fur is bright pink and yellow when you lay it down, but over 100 years it turns mahogany. Like you can see this, my screen door here, that's uh, pure mahogany. But uh, when fur ages 100 years, it looks exactly that finish as you, you know on my screen door here. So I wanted to preserve that, so I chemically stripped it. Um, I, I this is before we had kids, so obviously, you know, the, the smell and the vapors weren't a concern. But um, I chemically strip the floor. You lay down uh, the chemical stripper in a test patch first. You, you again, follow the technical data sheet of, this, of the stripper. Wait 10 or 15 minutes. You can see the finish come up. You scrape it off, uh, and, you, and you move your way through the floor like that. That will preserve that 100 years of patina. I lightly sand that after that just to kind of smooth the floor out, and then I do three coats of either a very, very tough polyurethane, oil polyurethane, or oil varnish. You wanna make sure it's floor rated. Uh, one of my favorite products is, <laughs> is actually called Fabulon, which is one of the best names ever. Uh, I get it through Sherwin-Williams, and it is the toughest, best satin floor polyurethane I've ever used. I did three coats on my main floor. My kids ride their plastic wheeled little toys all around there. And it just looks perfect after uh, you know maybe what eight or ten years now of use. So 
uh, but I put it on with lamb's wool. I soak it in, sand it between coats, uh, make sure there's good adhesion, and proceed. Um, I can't thank you guys enough for uh, for, for watching this. Um, this is my way of, of distilling 20 years of experience uh, and, and enthusiasm for painting uh, into you guys and hopefully help you out with some of your projects. So uh, if you like this, please share it. Uh, I would like to reach as many people as possible so you don't run into the uh, common uh, mistakes that homeowners do. Uh, also, a couple nights ago, I actually did a uh, Tom Reber, who's a business coach for contractors, interviewed me for his podcast. It's called the Strongpreneur Nation podcast, like Strong Entrepreneur. It's on iTunes. Uh, that should be coming out this next week. So if you guys are on iTunes, uh, look that up, Tom Reber, R-E-B-E-R. -E -E you can reach me at uh, www.nickslavic.com. And again, share this. Uh, thank you for the questions during. Um, I'll look forward to your questions after this and send me your questions anytime. I'll compile them and we'll do this again. So thank you guys and have a good rest of the weekend.